Okay, I wanted to go back in uh, the Wayback Machine a little bit uh, to try to kind of explain how some of the energy saving stuff started out and uh, how effective it was. Not very. Uh, we went through a time, mostly started out in the 70s, oil shortages, shortages of everything, including toilet paper, just like we're having now. And there was a push for energy conservation. And this went into the 80s, and there was a lot of talk about, you know, how do you get, say, gas furnaces to run using less gas, and so on. So both the industry and some kind of individuals, uh, companies come up with these little energy saving things. Well, and there were modifications of existing furnaces to try to reduce the energy usage. And I kind of thought I'd go over a few of these things. Most of them you'll never see anymore because the new furnaces don't use any of this stuff anymore. Uh, Sanding pilots, draft hoods, things like that don't exist anymore. But I thought it would be kind of neat to go over what some of these things were, what they were purported to do, and what they actually did. Okay, so let's take a look at this guy first. Now this is a vent damper. Now, I'll caution you, if you see one of these, pull it off or jam it open. Uh, I did a video on this that I'm going to link at the end of this video. This damper was supposed to close when the furnace was off because all furnaces at that time just had a vent going up to the roof. And there was a draft hood. If you don't know what a draft hood is, uh, it was a dilution device to uh, cool the vent gases and eliminate problems from drafts uh, that could cause the flame to roll out the front of the furnace. Uh, I'll put it that in a nutshell there and we'll just call it good for that right now. Uh, I should do something on draft hoods. I don't think I've ever done anything. but. Uh, at least not definitive, but I'll get around to that another time. This was designed to close up when the furnace was off and that would block number one warm air coming from the heat exchanger after the furnace had shut off and it was a hole in your roof. You know, you break the go hole in the roof. These things, some of them were seven inches, maybe eight on some big ones, but this is six, but uh, they didn't work, they failed, and there were some safety problems, and Honeywell actually uh, said pull them off or jam them open. But that, what this was designed to do is it would be closed all the time until you called for heat, and then it would open up, once it proved open, it would allow the gas furnace to fire up. It sounds neat. It sounds like it would work good. It really didn't make a lot of difference. Uh, there were so many of these different types of these things come out. There were tons of them, little companies, big companies, all over the place. None of them were very effective. There was one that had bimetal damper things in here, and, and when it heated up, it would close. That was supposed to work good. Uh, there were ones that had a solenoid. Those are great. I don't have any of those to show you. They're pretty much all long gone. But there were all sorts of vent dampers were put out. The vent dampers eventually were no longer necessary even on the 80% furnaces. And here's why. With this type of furnace was introduced the inducer fan. When the inducer fan was come on, was 
put out. It was uh, a helper fan to assist in the removal of the vent gases because as uh, furnace efficiencies increased, the vent temperatures weren't high enough to actually expel the gases out through the roof. So they used this helper fan. That helper fan pretty much did the same thing as a vent damper. It blocked most of the air going out. There wasn't a lot of heat left in the heat exchanger anyway. So uh, it made quite a bit of difference in, uh, in what the vent damper was designed to get rid of. That happened with the 90% furnaces, it was even more so. So there's virtually no loss through the stack and the necessity for a vent damper was gone. Okay, this next device is actually still used in a number of uh, gas appliances. It was the electronic ignition. Now, it's got three components. Here's your uh, control box. Yes, the control box has been kind of melted. Uh, that's because the stuff I have is all used. It does actually still work, but uh, the pilot assembly, uh, it was adapted to, and then there's a gas valve. Okay, all three of those components were taken onto a regular standing pilot furnace, and they were installed uh, to eliminate the standing pilot. When there was a call for heat, the pilot would light from the spark, the control board would prove it, and it would turn on the gas valve for main gas. Uh, what it was designed to do is eliminate the gas usage from the uh, standing pilot so that you didn't waste all that gas. I'll also link a video on how much gas these things actually use with a standing pilot versus something like this. It's probably not worth what it costs to put that thing in. That whole uh, installation would cost you probably $300. So it was a pretty expensive uh, method of getting rid of a pilot. But it did save some gas. So uh, that was a second one that was, that was quite common. I actually put in a whole bunch of these things. Uh, the local utility was paying us to put them in and all that. And so, yeah, I did back in the 80s, I put a bunch of those things in. Whether they were work, worked well or not, I, I, I think they were kind of necessary, but uh, I don't know if they were worth the trouble. The last one I don't really have an example of. I think I had one at one point, probably threw it away. It was called a furnace brain. Yeah, well, I bypassed a whole bunch of them. What they were there for is they were a timer. So that when there was a call for heat, the burns would come on normally, and then they would... Uh, uh, cycle off and on during the cycle like it, it, they'd run for like two minutes and then they'd be off for a minute then they'd run two minutes and they'd be off for a minute something like that I think there are two or three settings on it what it was there for is to reduce your gas usage and essentially make it a smaller furnace uh, it was notably ineffective uh, there was too much loss, there was too much hot gas going through there that just kept going through and then cool air would come into the burner assembly and it would cool it off and I, it just, you know, you're trying to make something smaller that wasn't designed to be small. And so notably ineffective, disconnected tons of those things. So, and in fact, I disconnected an awful lot of stuff. The spark igniter is the only thing that's still out there that really had much value. I mean, most of this stuff is antique. You won't see it much anymore. 
uh, the furnaces that had them are gone. The efficiencies are much higher now. But those were some of the attempts that were made in the mostly in the late 70s and early 80s to get uh, a little more efficiency out of appliances. I, I have one kind of anecdotal thing about this. That when the utility was requiring or was trying to reduce uh, usage, they put a lot of these Honeywell dampers, I put a bunch of them in, and a bunch of these electronic uh, spark igniters in, and uh, they give a discount to the people that were getting these things in. And I had a customer tell me, yeah, I did all that stuff yesterday, or <laughs> yesterday, I did all that stuff last year, and the cost of gas went up, but my bill stayed the same. I didn't have the heart to tell him that actually gas had gone down that year. It didn't go down a whole bunch, probably went down 10%, but it did go down. And so what that means is he didn't really save anything. So anyway, that's anecdotal. I didn't, you know, no real tests on it or anything like that. But they were not terribly effective. Um, the efficient use of gas had to wait until the 90s, until furnace designs caught up and federal requirements made it uh, necessary that they had to change the furnaces uh, in order to use less gas. Anyway, that's just a little peek back at, at some things that happened many years ago. That's it on this one.